If you want to diagnose your car faults, the OBD scanner simply isn't enough and you will also have to learn to work with electrical testing equipment and this video will be simple introduction to automotive electrical circuits. I will also use real battery and we make real circuit so you can also see everything I will show you in the action. In every automotive electrical circuit there are three things you need to consider. Voltage, resistance and amperage or current. Let's start with little theory. This is the ohms law. You can count your voltage by multiplying current and resistance together. So what this equation tells us is that if you know two values you can easily calculate the third. Doesn't matter which two you know. If you know two values, you can calculate the last one. So for example, we have voltage 12.6. We know our resistance is 6 ohms. So if we adjust this, we don't know our current. So our current will be voltage divided by resistance. And that is 12.6 divided by 6. So our current will be 2.1 amps. Current is measured by amps, resistance by ohms and voltage by volts. Okay, so this is very basic automotive circuit. We have our battery 12.6 volts and we have resistor. Any electrical component you have connected and power from your battery is acting as resistor. So it doesn't matter if it is light bulb, engine fan, any other component, everything that is connected to your car battery will have at least some resistance. The more of resistance it has, the less of the current we will have. So in this case, we know that current we already calculated is 2.1 amps. And remember that current is exactly the same in all the circuit. So it doesn't matter where, here is 2.1 and here is 2.1 amps. Everywhere in the circuit we have 2.1 amps current. Now let's say we have different resistance and we have resistance of only 1 ohm. So now we know that current is our voltage divided by resistance. So 12.6 divided by 1 is 12.6 current in amps. Now if we have even lower resistance, let's say only 0.5 ohms. So now 12.6 divided by 0.5. So now we would have 25.2 amps of current. And now it is getting dangerous because if you have component with such low resistance, you will get more of current. For example, 25 amps. If you have fuse for only 20 amps, it would already blow up. Now let's remove this resistor completely. Now there is no resistance at all. So basically what that means, our current is basically unlimited. You cannot even count it because you cannot divide by zero. Now this you never want to have in your car. This is called short circuit because you don't have any component that would eat up your voltage. And that is a problem. I will show you in the real example. You never want to create circuit like this accidentally in your car because you will fry your wires or even your components like ECU. Check it out. I have connected small wire to my ground and now I will connect another wire to positive terminal and touch them together. So we will create unlimited current. Okay, let me just use my hands. Wire immediately gets hot. I don't know if you see it, but here the wire is completely hot and soon it will melt down. Check it out what unlimited current does. Okay, so that is why you never want to create short because you will melt down your wires or even possibly damage your components like sensors or engine control module. Anyway, let's connect with our basic circuit. First I want to show you how voltage works. Okay, let's say we have resistance of this is 6 ohms like in our first example. So we have 2.1 amps and this current as I said is exactly the same in all parts of the circuit but it is not the same for voltage. Voltage is starting at 12.6 and we have 12 12.6 until we get to our resistor. So we have 12.6 here, but this resistor will eat up all the voltage and after the resistor we have zero volts. Zero volts here, zero volts here, zero volts here. Once we start from positive side, again we have 12.6 until we get to resistor. Resistor will eat up all the voltage and then it is zero. And now I want to show you how you can measure voltage with multimeter and how that works. So you probably already seen multimeter. This is digital multimeter meter you can measure voltage resistance and current you have two leads positive and negative and how that multimeter takes measurement if i put one lead on positive terminal and my second lead on negative terminal it will read out 12.6 but how the reading works it takes voltage here is 12.6 and voltage here is zero so the multimeter takes both values 12.6 and zero 
And what you see on screen is basically one lead subtracted of the other. So 12.6 minus zero, it's 12.6 and that is what you see on your screen. So now if I put one of my lead on the positive side and second lead also on the positive side, both leads will read out 12.6. So what you will see on screen One lead will read 12.6 minus second lead also reads 12.6. So you will get reading of zero volts. So if you want to measure voltage, you need to put one lead before the resistor and second after the resistor. Then you get accurate voltage reading. I guess that is enough theory for now. We can set up basic circuit. First we have our battery. We can start by taking voltage reading. So on multimeter, if you want to measure voltage, you set it to voltage and you choose the number that is higher than you expect, but close as possible. So if we work with 12.6 volt battery, what number I want to select is 20 because two volts is too low since we expect 12 point something and 200, it's too much. It won't do precise measurements. So let me say, set it to 20. One lead on the positive, second on the negative, and we have 12.3. The battery should be charged a little, but for these experiments it will be completely enough. See, and if I put two leads on one terminal, it will read out zero, also on the second terminal. So let's connect some component and we will make some measurements. I will use my jumper cables to create circuit. And for our test electrical device, we will use this. This is actually beeper for seatbelt warning. I have some videos how to disable seatbelt warning with OBD2 scanner, but sometimes it doesn't work and you have to remove this box manually. Okay, so one, I have ground lead connected and power lead. We will try right, right now. If it works, it should start to beat. Oh, we almost got it. Little bit connection. Okay, we got it connected. So as you can see right now we have completed circuit and let's check our readings now. I connected red lead on our component power and black lead I can just connect on my ground. And we got 12.1 volts. So almost as expected 12.3. There can be little differences because this wiring can have some resistance to it. Now if you want to test component like this, there is also a lot simpler and quicker way and that is using the power probe. All we have to do is connect this to our battery. So red on the positive terminal, black on the negative. It will start automatically. I simply connect this to my ground. Connect second lead. It tells me I have it connected backwards. I need to connect other terminal, this is ground. Yes, now it's connected good. All I need to do is send some power. See? And I can, I already proved that it works. The power probe like this have a lot more uses. I will put a link in description and you can check it out on Amazon. But this is one of the best tools you can get for automotive electrical testing.